Filament organization has been a struggle to me for years. When I started out 3D printing about a decade ago, it was much easier thanks to me only ever having a few spools on hand. Then during my bedroom print farm days, I only ordered a few materials and set colors, which greatly simplified in staying on top of this. Over time, through various printer builds, channel sponsorships, and a bit of an obsession with unique filaments, this has spiraled out of control. Before we moved, I committed to getting a handle on this so that I wasn't spending half an hour each time I needed to find a specific spool of material. I started working on this months ago, but it quickly got pushed aside to make room for other projects. Well, I finally decided enough is enough, and just this past week, I finished what I'm going to call phase one. I know I'm not alone in this filament chaos, and in this video, I'll go over why I chose the organization solution I did, what goes into building it, and future plans to make it even better. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Thanks to Voxel PLA for sponsoring today's video. Used exclusively in a 150 machine print farm, they now offer 15 colors of PLA+, and 5 colors of PETG+. Both are available at the low price of $16.99. This is an excellent choice for anyone needing reliable and affordable materials, even for more demanding applications. Filament performance is excellent even on high-speed printers. Bulk discounts are available along with free shipping in the US when you order three or more rolls. Voxel PLA also provides high-quality 3D printer upgrades, such as the Bento Box 2-stage filter and the Bamboo Lab AMS Hydra, along with many others. Check out the link in the description to voxelpla.com to find out more about their high quality affordable filaments and printer upgrades. My original plans for this studio space was to just install a bunch of rep racks along the walls to hold all of my filament. I had five of these in the last place and a slightly different variation that Joel designed years ago when we were back in California. For anyone not familiar with RepRack, it's an open source spool holder and storage system created by my buddy Pooch or RepCord. This system uses a combination of low-cost conduit and either printed or laser-cut French cleat-style brackets to quickly mount it onto the wall. It's a really inexpensive and effective way to get your filament off the ground and organized. Before we moved, I was talking about the new studio and plans for it on stream when my buddy Nappin brought up Fillabilly. I'd never heard of it before, but I would best describe it as rep racks meet IKEA hacks. This system uses IKEA's popular Billy bookcase for its frame, along with a series of printed brackets and conduit to hold all of the filament in place. I really like the look of it and that it lets you store filament from the floor all the way up to, in my case, just about the ceiling. But I had some reservations. Based on my math, I knew I would need at least three of these, which meant I would be cutting a ton of conduit. Also, while the shelves are fairly inexpensive, Idaho doesn't actually have an IKEA. So shipping is through a third-party freight company and can be pretty dang expensive. Much of the new studio I designed around using IKEA pegboards and drawers, so I thought if I order it all at once, maybe I can justify paying the high shipping cost. While I was waiting, I ended up getting super lucky and IKEA actually had a promo that offered free freight shipping, which made the decision to order everything a whole lot easier. It took a couple months to arrive, so we had a few very bland backdrop videos, but was well worth the wait. During the move-out process from the place we had been renting, when it came time to unscrew the portions of the rep racks that were in the wall, it ended up taking out some pretty decent sized chunks of paint with it. I have no idea if it was just cheap paint, a reaction to the PETG, or just bad luck, but one thing I really like about the Fillabilly system is that there are very few holes that need to go into the wall. I do strongly recommend at least getting shelf anchors though to make sure that they are secured and not going to topple over. Fillabilly is a pretty simple system. For printed parts, you have bottom holders, other holders, and a spacer template, which is a lifesaver. I printed out all the brackets in white Voxel PLA PETG Plus on the Prusa Mark IV. The instructions don't specifically state the need for PETG, but it's what I've always used for rep racks and it's my recommendation. I initially printed them in draft quality, but found them to snap fairly easily, so I switched to the 0.2 structural profile built into Prusa Slicer. This did mean that each part took a little bit longer to print, but I saw a real difference in the inner layer adhesion and part strength, so to me it was worth it. Once I had all my printed parts, I started to assemble the shelves. 
Growing up in a household that loved Ikea, between my childhood and moving out, I've built my fair share of Ikea furniture, and I gotta say that the Billy bookcases are a fairly simple one to assemble. For what we need, we just need to assemble the outer frame. The original design looks like it intends for you to not install the center shelf piece, but based on some other makes and my own experience, I highly recommend using it. It helps hold everything together, makes it more rigid, and there's no loss in filament that it can hold. You also need to install the back panel, which just slides in the groove on the sides and is secured with small nails from the back. One of mine is in front of a power outlet and my cable coax port, so I cut a slit out of the backing. My original plan was to mark it with a pencil and then take my Dremel to it, but I actually found that that backing material was so thin that just using a sharp box cutter or knife was able to cut right through it and was much easier. To install the holders, start at the bottom with the bottom holder. This gets placed with the flat portion down, then use the printed template to ensure that it is flat and centered. For each of them, you'll need to drive two number six three quarter inch screws into the bracket to secure it to the shelf. The template's mirrored, so when you go to install the second bracket, it just slips onto the top side of it. This process would be pretty rough without that template, but once I got a handle on how to sort of balance the brackets with the template in one hand and my drill and the screw in the other hand, it was all really quick. The most tedious part by far is having to cut down the half inch conduit. These need to be cut down to 746 millimeters long. Prior to this, I'd cut a few pieces for my rep rack, but we're talking maybe eight or 10 versus the 48 I had to do for these three shelves. I knew this was going to be the rougher part of this. So before even committing to this project, I did some initial research to see if there was some kind of an automatic pipe cutter. And the only one I really found was a Makita one that was going for about $130. Ultimately, I decided to pass, but there was a point when I had the sun beating down on me as I cut pipe for a few hours that I wondered if I made the right call. My biggest recommendations are to wear gloves, get a decent pipe cutter, and if you're not going to be using a deburring tool for the edges of the conduit, be very careful when you're handling them. It's fine once they're in the brackets, but they are quite sharp until they are. Once I had all the pipe cut, I was very excited to get it installed. The fit is nice and tight, and at least with my PETG parts, the conduit makes a satisfying sound as it pops into place. The printables project mentions some hardware to secure the dowels in place, but I found that to be unnecessary. All that was left was to load up the racks. As I filled up the shelves and cleared out my floor, the corner of the room, and my closet, it was incredibly satisfying to see everything finally coming together. I'm not sure if I miscounted or if I just got more filament in after I'd planned this, but I ended up filling up all three shelves and had to put a few rolls on top. So as long as I don't get any more filament in, I should be good. For now, all the filament is just randomly on there, which is still much better and easier to find rolls than before, but I do have plans. Eventually, I'm going to pull everything back off the shelves and organize them by filament type and color. XR Bunker sent out a NeoPixel Hub, which is a PCB with RGB LED connections, and an ESP32 to run WLED, so I'd also like to wire in some LEDs. The one thing I need to do right away is install some wall anchors into each of these shelves. I found these 400 pound rated ones on Amazon that I'll link in the description, but due to the narrow footprint of these and just the height of them, adding some kind of anchor, in my opinion, is a must. Aside from physically organizing the filament, I really want to experiment with Spoolman. This is a self-hosted inventory management system that can integrate with Moonraker, Octoprint, and Home Assistant that I've had recommended to me quite a few times. If there's interest in me covering this in an upcoming video, let me know in the comments. I'm super happy with how the Fillability filament shelves turned out. As much as I enjoyed using rep racks, I think this is a much nicer looking solution, and I love that the only holes I have to put in my walls are for these anchors. While I live in a fairly dry climate, there is an optional version of this bookcase with glass doors. The cost is over double, but if you only need one, I can see some added insulation and desiccant pairing very nicely with it. And that has been the Fillabilly filament rack. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that maybe I inspired you to do a bit of organization of your own filament. For anyone interested in finding out more about this project or making one for themselves, I'll have a link to the printables page in the description. 
On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video just about every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I'll have links in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Dana from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.